Praise the Lord, Christian Life Church. Welcome to midweek service. Uh, so thankful for the presence of God. Uh, we had a great service Sunday morning talking about the power of God and how uh, His Spirit enables us to overcome the enemy, to tear down walls. Uh, he gives us the tools, the weapons uh, to win. And uh, I'm so glad I'm on the winning side with Jesus Christ. Um, asking uh, God to give us direction. Amen. To uh, uh, for those that are sick at church, that the Lord would heal their bodies, that the Lord would bless people on their jobs, bless people in their uh, relationships, bless them financially. Uh, there, is, there are benefits. The Bible says He daily loads me with benefits in the uh, book of Psalms. So uh, It's so beneficial to live for God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go right to the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Uh, it says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against uh, the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual uh, forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and in addition to all, uh, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And then verse 18 is what we're going to teach on today. With all prayer and petition, Pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Amen. Listen to this story. There was a mother who got a call from her child's school. Her daughter was sick <clears throat> and asked her to come pick her up from work. So she left work and went and picked up her daughter and called the doctor. Well, the doctor's schedule was full, and uh, they could fit her in the next morning. Um, and the doctor told her in the meantime, uh, get this certain drug that's over the counter, and over counter medicine. And so the mother went home and tucked the daughter into bed and said, I'll be right back and went to the pharmacy, uh, uh, bought the medicine. And when she came back out to the car, she had locked her keys in the car. Well, she began to panic and she called her daughter. And her daughter said, you know, Mom, if you just get a clothes hanger, you can actually unlock that door, uh, you know, going through the, uh, behind the window, you can unlock the door. And so the mom got a clothes hanger, and uh, she tried to do it, but she just, she had never done anything like that before. And so she prayed, Lord, uh, please help me, please help me to unlock this door. And right after she finished praying, uh, a man was dropped off there on the curb, and um, uh, he looked uh, a little, you know, scraggly. He hadn't shaved in quite a while. The clothes he uh, was wearing were tattered and torn. Kind of looked homeless, but uh, she went up to him and she said, Sir, could you please help me? I've got a, a sick daughter at home. I've locked the keys in the car, and, and somebody said I could use a clothes hanger to unlock it, but I don't know how to do that. He said, absolutely, ma'am. And so he took that clothes hanger and uh, he unbent it. And right away he got that door unlocked. And, and uh, oh, she was so thankful. She just uh, became uh, emotional. And she just gave him a great big hug. And uh, she said, you're such a good man. And he said to her, he said, no, no, I'm not, lady. I'm not a good man. As a matter of fact, I just got out of prison this morning. And as he walked away, the mother lifted up her hands to heaven and prayed again. And she said, thank you, Lord, for sending me a professional. <laughs> God sometimes answers our prayers in unexpected ways, doesn't he? In fact, I think he finds delight in surprising us uh, with his answers. And, and regardless of how the answers come, church, rest assured, he hears your prayers. And he will respond to them. Uh, and for this reason, prayer really is the overarching theme to the overcomer. <clears throat> so we need to learn to pray like an overcomer. Uh, and it can be um, 
a little intimidating preaching on prayer because as I study for it, I realize that I have come up short in my prayer life. I need to pray more. And, uh, and also I realize that some of you have come up short in your prayer lives. Uh, I heard somebody say, if you don't get convicted once in a while when there's preaching going on, uh, then you're not in tune with God because part of our walk with God entails God convicting us when we maybe not maybe aren't uh, uh, doing our best or in his perfect will he'll give us a conviction uh, to to get us back on the right path uh, but today uh, we are going to be positive we we understand that we all uh, have prayer lives that we can improve on and so in a positive way we aren't going to examine what we don't do we're going to talk about what we can do by the grace of God right so in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 which is what we've been teaching on uh, there are critical characteristics of prayer that help us overcome the evil one our warfare against uh, Satan and so we've explored Ephesians 10 through uh, 16 or 17 uh, Paul instructs us to put on the armor uh, to battle against the you know the wiles the the armor the the uh, tools the weapons of the enemy and so now there's this postscript from his famous scripture uh, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and so Paul makes it clear we are in an ongoing war effort. In our enemy, uh, Satan has usurped our own rightful dominion over the earth. The earth was supposed to be ours. We were supposed to have dominion over it with God's spirit and God's righteousness. Uh, but now Satan uh, has claimed the title of Prince of the World. And as a result, uh, we are kind of in a resistance movement like uh, World War II with France and the uh, underground French resistance. Uh, and we are living in enemy-occupied territory, but it's our land. Uh, it belongs to us, and God has given us uh, the right direction to defeat the enemy. Uh, our Lord and Commander, He is determined to lead us in the struggle to take back what, what is ours. And so it means that we are engaged in this, um, in this titanic battle against invisible powers and principalities determined to cut us off from God. Listen, Satan would want you cut off from God. He would want you to try to draw your own power to win the battles, knowing that you have meager resources to win this war. Uh, and so prayer is our line of communication. Prayer links us to the leader. Prayer gives us strength. Prayer gives us direction every single day. And so it's why Paul was so devoted why he had special spaces in scriptures about prayer, uh, especially when discussing the believer's armor. Um, uh, these implementations of warfare, uh, they're described, I, I, don't, I don't want to make light of it, but they're almost in passing. You know, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. Uh, uh, but then Paul slows down and he gives us 24 words about prayer. Uh, if you have any doubt about the importance of prayer, uh, consider the high place of prayer in the life and times of Jesus Christ. It was not only his regular habit, but it was the, uh, his resort in every emergency, however slight or serious. Uh, when perplexed, Jesus prayed. When pressed hard by work, he prayed. When hungry for fellowship, he found it in prayer. He chose his disciples, his associates. He received his messages uh, on his knees in prayer. If tempted, he prayed. If criticized, he prayed. If fatigued in the body, if weary in the spirit, he prayed. Uh, it was his one resource to make it through was his unfailing habit of prayer. It brought him unmeasured power from the beginning and he kept the flow going uh, and it was never unbroken it was never uh, diminished his link with the Almighty there was no emergency that was too dire too difficult there was no necessity no temptation there was nothing that would not yield to prayer that's how much prayer meant to Jesus Christ pray always right 
it, there is a persistence to the overcomer's prayer life. In his letter to the Thessalonians, Paul told the believers in that city, in the city of Thessalonica, uh, chapter 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. Jesus said it in this way in Luke 18 and 1, men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Amen. So what does it mean to pray always? Do we walk around like zombies, uh, oblivious to our surroundings, oblivious to what's happening? Do we close our eyes as we're driving down the highway because we've got to be praying all the time? Uh, no. It means that we are in constant contact with God. Uh, you know, like soldiers on a battlefield uh, who make a connection with the commander via uh, radio. We maintain our connection. We maintain uh, uh, our direction uh, and our goal uh, through our conversation with the great commander, with the Almighty God. We live in fellowship with Him, right? And if we live this way, um, we won't have to begin every prayer with announcing who we are, right? Um, he knows who we are. And when we are in constant prayer, uh, we are just constantly in His presence. It's almost as if we're not ending any prayer and starting a new one. We are just always praying. I think about Tevye in uh, the musical uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, he works. He interacts with his family his neighbors, uh, and he carries on this running conversation with God, and he chats with him like he's, he's a friend, and he talks to him about anything that comes to mind, you know? His daughters are getting married. He talks to God about it. His horse is lame. He talks to God about it. His, his community uh, uh, is under attack. He talks to God about it. His poverty he talks to God. His, his dreams, he talks to God. He pauses to carry on business, take care of the needs, but the moment everything is taken care of, he's back in his conversation with God. It's as if his life is his prayer. It's as if his river of life is his prayer, and there are islands of work and family that are important, but everyday things that he has to mend to and take care of, but his river is prayer. And that's what God expects of us. That's what the overcomer's life is like. Uh, they have a life full of prayer that also includes moments of work and moments of family and moments of this and that. Uh, but their life's dream uh, or their life's ambition is to be in communication with God, to hear the heart of God. So how do we pray? always in our lives today. Uh, I tell you, we can have things that prompt us. Uh, I heard of a man who, when he brushes his teeth in the morning, uh, he says a quick prayer that the Lord would anoint every word that comes out of his mouth. And if he washes his face, uh, he asked the Lord to anoint his countenance so people would be drawn to him to know more, uh, to know more about God. And today we've got smartphones. There's smartphone apps. Um, that you can download. Uh, you can set your phone up to have alarms for prayer reminders. Uh, perhaps you just want to have a quick moment throughout the day, 9 a.m., 12, uh, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. Maybe you want to have just uh, these moments throughout your day that you want to be reminded, uh, say a quick prayer, say a quick praise, say a quick thank you, right? Uh, I don't think that's that's ridiculous because that's what the overcomer does. The overcomer has a, a habit of prayer. Praying always means also praying persistently. Persistently. Uh, in Jesus Christ's parable in Luke chapter 11, there's a man knocking on a door late at night, right? And it was likely a common experience because in the hot summer, uh, uh, people would travel uh, after sundown because it would be cooler. Uh, and so there was a hungry guest that needed to be fed. And so uh, because the host's cupboard was bare, he went to his neighbor and knocked on the neighbor's door. Hey, I need to borrow some food. But his friend was asleep. The mats were laid out on the floor. Go away. Don't you realize what time it is? My door is, is locked. We're all in bed. We, we don't want to be bothered. And then Jesus Christ brings home the point.
But I tell you this, though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will give up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you'll receive what you're asking for. Keep on seeking, and you'll find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Luke 11, 8-10, New Living Translation. Listen, if such a neighbor uh, uh, eventually gets up and gives you what you want, how much more is God going to give us the requests, the desires of our hearts when we have a bold persistence in prayer? Uh, we should be praying like the traveling salesman whose foot is in the door, <laughs> right, trying to sell what he has. Uh, or the wrestler who has the person in the headlock. Raise your voice. Raise your voice, Jesus' story implies. Uh, strive on. Be like the shameless neighbor in the middle of the night. Keep pounding the door. God, God, I need your help. I need your direction. Hallelujah. Uh, I need your forgiveness. Whatever it is. Uh, uh, there are so many possibilities uh, when the overcomer begins to pray. He said, praying with all prayer. Praying with all prayer. Prayer. Such a tiny word. And yet it, it, it really has such a large meaning. It means everything that can be placed in a basket. Uh, there's no limits. There's no exclusion. It's the entire gauntlet. Uh, it's the whole enchilada. It is... It is Prayer, every kind of prayer you can think of, pray it, right? Paul goes further. He says nothing, uh, uh, he tells us there's nothing that cannot be prayed for. There is no situation that prayer is not helpful. Uh, when, when you teach your children to pray, when we taught our children to pray, I was thinking about there's three basic types of prayer. There is the please prayer the thank you prayer, and the I'm sorry prayer, right? Uh, the prayer of petitions, please. The prayer of thanksgiving, thank you, God. The prayer of confession, I'm sorry, Lord. And uh, they can fit into any place, any time, any situation that anyone has, child or adult. And so we can pray uh, at all times. We can pray on all occasions. We can pray at a stoplight. We can pray while we're at school waiting to take a test. We can pray... Uh, at the doctor's office, the dentist's office. We can pray while we're doing laundry. We can pray while we're working on the car or mowing the lawn. You got a spare moment? Keep the line of communication open between yourself and the throne of God. Amen. Um, and it, if those occasions seem like, oh, they're not reverent enough, uh, consider what the scripture tells us uh, about prayer. We're to pray when we're thankful. Well, if you got that bolt off, you know, that motor that you're working on, uh, aren't you thankful? Uh, we need to confess our sins. If we've made a mistake, uh, don't wait until church and where you're wearing a suit and tie or a nice uh, a dress suit. Uh, uh, confess your sins right away, right? When we're sick, uh, we don't wait until the proper time to pray to God when we're sick or when we're in danger, right? Jesus, help me. We don't wait to say that. When we're tempted, we should be praying at every moment we have a chance to. Uh, church meetings, prayer meetings, social festive uh, occasions, weddings, parties. We should be praying. And we should be praying in all places. At the dinner table, in the uh, Bible class, at our bedside. When we're jogging, when we're walking, when we're riding our bike, when we're driving to work. When we're having a personal devotion. Uh, 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 when we're uh, uh, getting ready uh, in the morning, washing up. Uh, every time is a great time to pray. You know, the people of the New Testament, even the Lord himself, prayed uh, in following locations. They prayed in a solitary place, according to Mark 1. Matthew 14 says he prayed on a mountain. Luke 2 says he prayed in the temple. Acts 10, they prayed on the housetop. And Acts 10 and 30, they prayed in a house. And Acts 12 and 5, they prayed in the church. And Acts 16 and 13, they prayed at the riverside. And Acts 27 and 29, they prayed in the ship. And Acts 16 and 25, they prayed in prison. Uh, in Matthew 6 and 6, they were encouraged to pray in our own rooms. Uh, King James calls it our closets. We're to pray uh, anywhere. Any place is the right place to pray. In any time, 
Matthew 1 and 35 says pray before daylight. Acts 16 and 13, they prayed on the Sabbath. Luke 9 and 18, they prayed when they were alone. In Acts 2 and 42, they prayed when they were together. In Luke 6 and 12, he prayed all night. In 1 Timothy 5 and 5, said to pray day and night. In Acts 6 and 4, they're to pray continually. We're to pray in sickness and in health. We're to pray at any hour. There isn't an hour that is that it is the wrong time to pray. Any time is the right time to pray. And we're to pray for all things. And it would be to make an exhaustive list of, of what the New Testament says people prayed for would be exhausted. But to name a few uh, that, that they prayed for. They prayed or were encouraged to pray for safety in Matthew 24 and 20, for forgiveness in Mark 11 and 25, for food in Luke 11 and 3, uh, for faith in Luke 22 and 32. Uh, they prayed for other people in John 17 and 9. They prayed for healing in James 5 and 14. They prayed for spiritual wisdom in Ephesians 1 and 17. They prayed for uh, relief from suffering in James uh, 5 and 13. In James 5 and 18, they prayed for rain. In Luke 1 and 13, they prayed for children. In, in uh, the third epistle of John, verse 2, they prayed for health and prosperity. In Matthew 26 and 41, they prayed for spiritual strength. In other words, no limits. Is it something to pray for? Pray for it. We should be praying for personal things, for uh, uh, home situations, for relationship situations, for business situations, for work situations. We should be praying. All things should be covered in prayer. If it's something you're concerned about, then pray about it. Pray about it. Amen. If you're trying to sell a vehicle, pray about it. If you're trying to buy a vehicle, pray about it. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, what should I do with the house? Pray about it. Ask God to help you, to give you direction. All right? Hallelujah. Our goal as overcomers is to know that we have prayed about everything. That we, have, that we are so in tune with God in His presence that we can immediately be in touch with God. For any situation right give it to God uh, and we're to pray with supplication supplication means to ask uh, and so we ask God to provide us our needs and so we come to him obviously with we've talked about it with a humble spirit with worship with Thanksgiving we come to him uh, uh, confessing our sins uh, but we come to him asking God giving him our petitions some people have said, well, you shouldn't, you, it's self-centered asking God to help you. No, it's not. Uh, because if God helps you, uh, then God is glorified and you can let other people know. Look at how much God has helped me. Isn't this a God that you would like to know? Isn't this a God you would like to serve? He's been so good to me. Could you imagine if God wasn't good to us? How could we convince anyone to follow a God that's not good to us? So pray with supplications, right? Lord, help us. Help us. When Jesus taught his disciples the model uh, of prayer to pray, he filled it with requests, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Uh, there's a petition on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day or daily bread. These are petitions, our, our, our needs. We're asking for forgiveness, for food, uh, for deliverance, right, from evil. In the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord invites us to pray without holding back. James, the brother of the Lord, tells us that our failure uh, to place our needs before God explains our lack of power in our lives. James 4 and 2, you do not have because you do not ask. So at this point, some will say, well, if God is all-knowing and all-powerful, why would I need to ask him anything? Why would I need to ask him anything? Matthew 6 and 8 says, For your Father knows the things that you have need of before you even ask him. Yes, it's true. So why do we need to pray at all uh, if God already knows uh, what our needs are? And there's four answers to this, and I'll, I'll end with this. First, we pray to maintain our connection with God or to deepen our connection with God. We are keeping the communication lines intact and operative so we know his will. 
uh, I think about during the Civil War stories I've read where they had crews who just continually made sure that the uh, uh, lines between the front line and Washington uh, were were constantly connected so they could uh, through you know Morse code uh, speak to the president and get uh, their directions and they constantly made sure that those lines stayed intact why because the communication was so important we prayed to keep that communication secondly uh, God wants us to want what he knows we should have you see prayer gets our minds attuned to him and so our requests, our petitions become more mindful. We begin to think about, you know, uh, is this a real need? Uh, 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 this is really what I need to be praying for instead of that. And that all comes in a mature Christian's walk as they spend more time in prayer. And the more time in prayer you spend, the more time you'll see God answering your prayers, right? which draws us closer to God and it improves our effectiveness in prayer. Stanley Jones put it this way, prayer is surrender. Surrender to the will of God uh, in cooperation with that will. Uh, if I were in a boat and I threw a, a, a boat hook, you know, with a rope on it uh, to the shore and pulled uh, and I drew closer to the shore, I promise you it's not me pulling the shore to the boat, it's me pulling the boat to the shore. When you pray, you aren't pulling God to your will. You're pulling yourself to God's will. And so uh, prayer tunes us up with God's will. Third, God tells us to pray for our needs so we acknowledge him as the source when the prayers are answered. Um, uh, asking and receiving enhances our awareness of God's continual um, uh, uh, movement in our lives and our constant need of God's presence and God's moving. Uh, Augustine gives us the fourth reason uh, for petitionary prayer. Prayer is preparation. God wants you to pray uh, so that your capacity to receive his gifts may be enlarged. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, and I'll tell you how your effectual fervent prayers and how you can become a righteous person uh, how you can add to it and become more effective more uh, fervent more righteous pray pray right we pray we pray we pray uh, and our prayers become more pow powerful more effective more fervent uh, and so we build it as layers of prayer layer upon layer prayer prepares us for the great blessings of God. I'll close with this. Charles Spurgeon wrote, uh, Asking is the rule of the kingdom. It's a rule that never will be altered in anybody's case. If the royal and divine Son of God cannot be exempted from the rule of asking, you and I cannot expect to be, uh, cannot expect the rule of prayer to be relaxed in our favor. God will bless Elijah and send rain on Israel. But Elijah's got to pray for it. The chosen people of the nation of Israel is going to prosper under Samuel. But Samuel's going to have to plead for it. If the Jews are going to be delivered in Daniel's time, Daniel's going to have to intercede for it. God's going to bless Paul. He's going to use them. Nations are going to be converted through him. But Paul's going to have to pray. And so Paul prayed without ceasing. His epistles show that he expected nothing except by asking for it in prayer. So if you don't pray boldly enough to ask what is your need, don't be surprised if, if God isn't working in your life like you thought he would. Uh, a lot of that is because of our lack of prayer. So let's pray. Let's, let's add to our prayer lives. Let's begin our prayer lives. Amen. Pray, church, every day. Pray with a praising and a worshipful spirit. Praise with a, uh, pray with a thanksgiving spirit. Pray with a confession. Uh, Paul said, I die daily. Paul repented every day uh, because we live in this stinking world. And, and, and the stink of the world gets on us. We've got to 
continually go before God and ask Him to cleanse us, to search our hearts, and then pray with petitions. Bring your needs before God. Continue to knock, continue to ask, continue to seek, and God is going to open the door. Amen. He's going to give you what you ask. You're going to find what you're looking for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, uh, I pray that you're blessed by this and look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at the Ramada Inn at 10 a.m. God bless you in Jesus' name.